Hi everybody, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing great. I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client, gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom and energy healing to help them out. They're asking for connection with the higher self, messages, energy healing. Stick around, I'm gonna read the goals here in full. This healing is for the client, but you might receive something from this as well. I wanna thank you so much to the client for the opportunity. It's really nice to meet you. It's really nice to get to dive into your goals here, see what comes up. Thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. All right, so this is what you have to say. You say, I would like to see what messages my higher self has to share with me and any energy healing for my highest good. My heart is open and I'm ready. <laughs> Okay. <sighs> All right, so let's get to know your higher self. Let's see what the messages are and energy healing that's going to best suit you at this time. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to relax now, get in the zone here. <sighs> I see an image of you and the energy is actually like for me, the volume's really high because I get very excited. But here it's like the most intense exhale and the energy is getting more and more deep. So if we're really excited, we're not really that deep, right? So going deeper and deeper and deeper. And in that depth, there's, there's a sense of seriousness. There's a sense of translation. Then only in a place of stillness and reflection can you truly get there. You know what I mean? You're in the shadow. I see that you are a bit of a shadow, kind of sitting on the edge of a mound of ground, sort of overlooking small lake, lots of trees around, lots of nature. The sky is very pretty. I mean, pink and purple. It's almost like uh, kind of a magical, maybe sunrise or sunset, but it's particularly pink and purple. Now I don't really see the sun in the sky, but I do see the sky is beautiful. The fact that you represent a shadow isn't a bad thing. It's just like, um, deep reflection. That's what, what that represents. I will say I'm having to match your vibration here. <laughs> and it's, it's like, <sighs> got to exhale all my excited, loud, high energy so that I can, I can really have this communication. And I'm just like, yes, yes, tell me more, tell me more. Still, <laughs> stillness. <laughs> I don't want to create a ripple in your pond. Okay. So your higher self shows me this first. And I tell your higher self, how come I feel like I am bouncing off the walls here? How come I, I almost feel like your energy is reflecting to me my energy? And my energy is not containing itself very well. And I'm bouncing off the walls. And I'm trying to calm down. What is your message? Your higher self actually helps me calm down. Now that I'm calm, I actually walk towards you completely, almost an identical to yourself. I'm also a shadow. I don't know that I represent Abby. I represent someone you're familiar with. You do look up, you do turn your head, you do acknowledge the exchange. Something is not sitting right in your heart.
This is a silent communication between you and another. But you're not talking to this other about what is in your heart. You're keeping that secret. I return to your higher self and I say, I think I know why my energy is doing the opposite of your energy. Because something needs to come to life inside yourself that you're going to need a little bit of a bouncy ball. You're going to need a little bit of the excitement. I don't know, let's go party and celebrate life, you know, instead of the, I am a deep and meditative soul. Not today. You're going to go have some fun. <laughs> it's almost like it needing a little bit of an injection of the diff a different kind of energy. Um, because that different kind of energy, it's going to be a catalyst to shift you, to get you where you're wanting to go. I still don't even know what that is, okay? <laughs> I'm still figuring you out. All right. So I tell your higher self, okay, now I understand my energy is appropriate. And that when I match your energy, it's really another reflection here that is able to get a message through to you at the same vibrational pattern in order for you to receive that message and then reflect on it again. You need that message, but there's something you're not talking about that's inside your heart. It's a mystery. And to be honest, it kind of reminds me of maybe you have an intuition about the world. Maybe you have a premonition. Maybe something is coming, okay? And you feel it in your heart, but you don't talk about it. It kind of reminds me of that. Maybe there's just a hunch, premonition, an intuition in your heart. Maybe you don't even have the language for it. Maybe you don't even know what it is, but it's there and it's felt and it's a secret. It's a secret, okay? It might not even be very clear to you. It might just be you picking up on something and that's about as far as it goes. Tell your higher self, gosh, it feels like I like, let's say you're going on vacation next year and you have to wait months before you get on that plane and you have that experience, right? I feel like months are going by to get you to budge vibrationally. And I tell your higher self, even in the midst of what is the few minutes of this session, I feel like I have been waiting months <laughs> to somehow impact your energy field. <laughs> That's what it's like. <sighs> what is your relationship with time? Like, what is your relationship with your own vibration and how you express that? how you are aware of it, what you're doing with it. There's a very noticeable anomaly here about everything I'm being shown thus far about you. It's not every day, okay? And it's all too serious, which is a little bit hard for me unless I'm allowed to be serious, but I feel like I'm encouraged to be more giggly and silly and bouncy and stuff. And I'm having a hard time matching, but I'm not supposed to match. I'm supposed to be the opposite of the energy that you're representing right now. I have to be that in order to help you properly. So your higher self is basically telling you that some very high vibrational energy is coming in. So where you are a reflection of stillness here, that high vibrational energy is going to get bouncy. It's going to get into your system and it's going to impact you like a, a major ripple in the pond. You're avoiding it though because something about you being animated differently in a way that may be new. And while that sounds like a good thing, it's also going to be a bit strange. Like suddenly you can read normal. Now you're dyslexic. <laughs> it's almost like this and now that. <laughs> and you're kind of picking up on it. And maybe that's this mystery in your heart. Maybe you are 
aware of hiding it from yourself, a premonition, that energy of a very high vibration, like a happy bouncy ball that's really goofy and silly, is coming on in and it's going to turn your world from right side up to upside down. But when it goes upside down, it's actually the most right side up it's ever been. If you're following me. So this is a pretty interesting message so far. Okay. Who do you keep? Do you keep people out? Because I don't even feel like you're letting nature in. Like you're seeing it, but you're not absorbing it. I tell your higher self, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. So let's get to the fun part. <laughs> like, I still feel like I'm blocked from getting to the fun part. And I tell your, your higher self is like, oh, like raising an eyebrow, like the fun part. Is there a monotone echo going on in here? <laughs> Am I like the only one in my own silly world? Like, I don't know why this is activating me to be extremely goofy. <laughs> but that's the energy that's required. So I'm like, yeah, the fun part when goofy happens to serious. <laughs> that fun part. I want to see it. I want to see it happen. Okay. Yeah, okay. So your higher self says, go ahead. Be goofy and impact the serious one. That's in meditation. I'm like, hmm. Ooh, <laughs> you're giving me a lot of power here <laughs> to be goofy. <laughs> okay, let me see. I don't know why the first thing that comes to me is a very, very small gopher. And the little gopher is like the size of, I don't know, a golf ball. Maybe that's just its head. It's very cartoony, I guess. But it's like, it's like the cartoon where maybe Bugs Bunny is coming forward and it's got the dirt. <laughs> so you can see where he's going. Well, I have this little gopher head that's like, like going through the ground and it's like going right past where you're sitting, like right up to where the water is, but its head's not poking out. And you actually do, because you, you're kind of back in the sitting and the eyes closed, but you kind of open one eye and you look over because you notice. I become the little gopher. But I'm not coming out of the hole yet because I want to just make you wonder. <laughs> okay. I actually become extremely still for what is a very long time, like a whole week. And I'm doing this on purpose to get you to want to check this out, to move. Suddenly, I make it all disappear and I say, well, you had your chance. And you wonder if it was a missed opportunity. And then something breaks in your heart like a water balloon and you start to cry. And you're tired of life being, in a way, serious and still and lacking a spark of magic and mystery. You regret not moving when you had a chance. And I can't ever go back as the gopher. That's long gone. What I do come back as is a, like a prickly plant. And I start to grow out of the ground that you're sitting on. And so it's like you're sitting on prickly plant. And it's, again, a cartoon scene where the plant grows and suddenly you feel it like you're a cartoon that just sat on a cactus and then you just shoot up in the air and make a funny noise. That's like, that's going to happen next. And... You actually are very sensitive because you, you're saying, um, okay, kind of angers you more than um, gets silly and like a comedy. You're just frustrated because um, that's life for you. It just wants to come right up where you're sitting in all of your peace and um, poke you startle you right into the air, make you whine and cry and then land what on your head. So then you can do what? 
Hmm. Tell your higher self. I know I'm supposed to get you to move, but I actually feel kind of oddly guilty. Like, um, I can't be as goofy as I want to be. And I can tell there's something far more sensitive beneath the surface that's unresolved. And it's kind of a despair type feeling. And I tell your higher self, if I represent silly, excited, I'm not doing a very good job of it. I change the whole scene. I take you out of nature. And I put you into a place with ginormous speakers. And I have you stand against like the vibration of the speakers. And there's going to be some really loud music, okay? And this is to change things. And something has got to change vibrationally. It's like showing me something's got to change. But the question is, how are you receiving change? How ready are you for change? When change comes, are you going to jump on it or wait until it disappears again? And then when change is so loud, like a blaring loud speaker, are you going to be happy? Like, what is going to make you actually budge in a way of feeling happy? And there's something to it. It's not just about being happy in life, but it's something about having a calling or a purpose. And um, that is a bit of a riddle. Okay. So let's see how you do with the speakers. You ignore this because it's not what you're looking for. You're not looking for loud, blaring music. Hmm. So you know what you want. But what if you're attached to... I don't know, what if you're stuck in a way? What if you are creating a stuck situation for yourself that is incomprehensible? I'm going to do a bunch of different things at once. All the ground's going to become mud. And the um, sky's going to become burnt. Everything is all going to be on fire. I'm going to see worms crawling all over the place. It's going to be raining tomatoes. Um, we're going to get all whacked out, okay? I'm also going to see that... I don't know, some ants are coming and you're covered in peanut butter. So we're going to create an insane situation that's so insane and so loud with so many details that is so obvious. And now what are you going to do? You're going to control this one? Vibrationally, are you going to control this one? Huh. You know what's cool about this? Most people would be like screaming. <laughs> You, on the other hand, find it interesting. <laughs> like, like you're seeing something different. You're seeing the possibilities. You're seeing a problem that is like channeling adrenaline for you. It's channeling um, an activation. Like, um, do something now. Uh, You actually get up and out of the mud and you listen for what's going on here. You're listening for actually what's real and what's not real. Man, I mean, are you controlling or are you just wise? I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe you're both. <laughs> okay. You have more a relationship with uh, a battle nature, like I like a tough life. Um, you've got to get on your feet, and you've got to have the stamina. You have to have the strength, strength of mind, strength of body, strength of spirit. You, you have to have an alignment with these things in order to um, face the problems of the world. Let's say so. So when life gets hard and life squeezes the living daylights out of you and a bunch of different layers of insanity, you actually feel far more alive and active. And when life is still, it feels peaceful, but it feels kind of like you're asleep in a way. 
So let's let's create a lot of happy things. Let's try this different. I just because I tell your higher self, I I know you're create you want okay. Your higher self is here presenting you in this way. Part of how your higher self communicates is asking me to be myself on purpose. Now, how we see me trying to wake you up and get you to move is teaching us more about you. All the while, I'm sending constant ripples of energy to get you reassessing, reorganizing, reflecting, reacting, you know, a bunch of re stuff. <laughs> and that's actually impacting your energy field. It's impacting you inhaling and exhaling in new ways through the layers of this journey, okay? It's getting you far more motivated than it seems like we've achieved yet. So instead of doing a darker scenario, we're going to do like a heavenly scenario, okay? All right, there's a swan now on your beautiful lake. And the swan is alive. Oh man, does that ever freak you out? Okay, so you're telling me raining tomatoes, everything on fire, worms, the mud is pulling you in. Makes sense. But the majestic swan that has a feminine spiritual energy that loves you with all her heart, terrifies you <laughs> that tells me that you this what this tells me is that it's hard it's honestly it's just it's hard to find the words it it, it kind of is heavy on my heart you're far more attuned to the chaos than you are attuned to a love even if you are love and maybe you've had a lot of experiences with challenge more than you've had a lot of experiences with simplicity. Then maybe you seek simplicity. Maybe you have become simplicity in the midst of chaos in order to navigate chaos. Not by becoming chaos yourself, but becoming simplicity. Now in the midst of simplicity, when love comes to you because there is no chaos, it's like... It's, it's terrifying and unfamiliar, even if it is familiar, that, that says something too. It, you have a hardened heart is what that tells me. But I feel like there's so, so much more mystery. I mean, okay. The swan is for you, and the swan is a real soulmate. The swan is a real spiritual being that you know. You're extremely familiar with who this is. And something in your heart is almost like, I don't know, I, I wouldn't be able to tolerate just like lemon straight up. I can't tolerate lemon straight up <laughs> and so this is just like it's almost like gulping straight lemon <laughs> and it's not terrible it's hard to manage makes your eyes water and lips pucker up and mouth drool and your heart is like clinky clanky squished tight puckering you know in all these ways she really means a lot to you. Maybe there's been a little minimal sort of amount of this kind of meaning in your life. Because the reaction towards it is almost like you've had to hold composure almost in an insane way. Hold composure. And this here is you not holding composure. <laughs> Because you can't. You could hold composure and actually be a champion in a chaotic environment. But when it's peaceful and genuine love that has touched your heart and soul many times in infinite time, it's derailing. Because you don't have enough experience with it. You don't know what to do. I say talk to her. 
and be yourself. Oh, you can hear me now. Were you ignoring me before? <laughs> okay, you can hear me now. Man. Everything about this, it's, it's a lot of emotions at once. It's like anger, sadness, loneliness, um, sorrow, loss. Uh, like, I miss you. I, it's like um, a lot of jammy kind of feelings in the heart at once that don't complete the circle. Like, when the circle is complete, it's breath, and it's like wisdom, and, and the horizon is forever, and I'm the horizon, and this exchange is like the horizon. I tell you, just just be whatever. Like, it's like I I I help you become whatever. So I, I turn you into basically a big bowl of ice cream that's melting, and you're starting to become so many droplets of yourself. You're becoming thousands of individual droplets of ice cream, and you're like um, beads moving in every direction, and you can't hold, pull yourself together. But you're not necessarily embarrassed or ashamed of this. And she's extremely patient. You, you finally come together as a big loud crack in light and you, you tell her that you're angry. You're angry with her. But you don't know that you're angry with her so much. You're angry at life or angry at the situation. You're, you're, you're angry and... Um, You're finally coming back to yourself like a scab that never healed. She gives you a really big hug. You know what she reminds me of? <sighs> like the most loving mother anybody could ever ask for. And a feeling like a loss of a mother or something like this. Like, um, I see Mother Mary and I see, it, it's like, a, okay, here's Jesus, here's Mother Mary. And Mother Mary and Jesus are like a perfect bonded pair. Because the love is so strong between the two of them, mother and son, okay? Now imagine Mother Mary goes bye-bye and Jesus is alone, not even having a mother. And so it would feel incomplete, right? And so while she represents many representations of love that your soul is familiar with, she represents so many things about love that is extremely loud and vulnerable. The most vulnerable, 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 vulnerable kind of love. This isn't just love comes to visit you and you're used to difficult times, finding a way to be still in simplicity in difficult times. This is beyond that. This is like the love that that is so intensely connected in the heart that the meaning and the authentic and authenticity of the exchange is is like Unlike any other thing, any other love, any other exchange, any other meaning even in life. And it feels like loss and it feels incomplete. It feels like a broken circle. And you're angry. It, you start to become an animal that doesn't look like any animal I've ever seen, but it has a really loud sort of... Ah! <laughs> it's like a weird animal scream noise. And it's just like, bah! it keeps going and going and going and going. And you're just making this noise. And it, you can't help it. It's like many, many teardrops that can't come together. You can't stop either. And you tell her, I'm so sorry. I can't stop myself from all of these reactions. 
And she smiles and she says, it is good. She says, it's good that you can't stop because you, something you've been holding, something bottled up inside without ability to properly release or heal it. And I just keep seeing Mother Mary returning to Jesus and Jesus is in tears. It's the most purest kind of genuine love anybody could ever fathom. And it's almost like the cross that Jesus bears is a shattered heart. And the loss of a mother keeps showing me this. It's like a metaphor a parallel to help try to create a language that gets to the core, the root of what kind of authentic love this is, but it's sad, okay? Something's broken in the the ring of life, all right? And this exchange between you and the spirit was a very hard time getting through to you because it's easier to get through to you, you know, when things are, are like kind of shaky and earthquakey and hellish even, <laughs> but things are so peaceful and then the love comes through, it's almost like a taser to the heart. And I tell your higher self, so, so the introduction of this is you in the shadow, right? But everything is colorful and beautiful and you're in a shadow of deep meditation, right? But why are you not colorful? It's time for the colors to return to you. And this also tells me that you're not letting in, you're not letting certain energies in, like like the excited, happy, bouncy ball energy might be the opposite of your nature, but you're not letting nature in either. Even when it's peaceful nature, even if it's a reflection of your own nature, you're just kind of keeping it at a distance. And when an opportunity comes that's tries to get your attention, like the little gopher, you notice, but you don't move. Just be still. And when this sticker bush plant comes up your butt and it's supposed to fling you off and it's supposed to be funny, it's not very funny. It's like life is an annoying, painful place. And then when everything turns to hell and everything, all the worms come and the trees are on fire and the sky is burning, raining tomatoes and worms and blah, 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 and mud. It's like, yes, I can finally be a warrior and I can live my life and true to my strong soul or something like this. Then when everything comes to peace and the most beautiful swan, the most beautiful female energy representing a pure mother energy. But more than that, it's all about the most unimaginable soulmate connections any souls could ever fathom to the level it's derailing. Like straight up, chug this straight lemon juice. <laughs> chug it down <laughs> chug down this keg of lemon juice like <laughs> puckering up you know releasing venting breaking the shell of your heart breaking your shell and it's showing me that this healing breaking the shell in the excited energy and high vibrational energy it needs to get into you it needs to have access to you and Facing this kind of love, letting this love break you down and make you vulnerable and not be able to stop. And the anger that you're venting is really just sadness and grief. And now the exchange is becoming more real and more connected and you're getting all that out of the system because you need, your heart needs to be open. There's no shells and you need to bring the color back in and you need to start actually absorbing life instead of just, I don't know, like it's a cardboard theater set and just life is just around you, but it's not a part of you, but it is a part of you. 
see where you're at now. You don't know what to do. You say, I've never felt so much pain as I do right now. And I see that she dims her light and she shows herself differently so that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't come on too strong because it's, it's unbearable. It's like the ultimate broken heart. And it's like loss. You hold her hands. And you say, what if, what's happened to me? Did I die? Did I stop living? What do I have to live for? You say things like this. She puts her hand on your heart and she looks at into your eyes as she channels her pure light into your heart. You're a bit numb, by the way. But you won't stay numb. And I see your entire spirit goes into a crack in, the, in your heart. And it goes in there and it's starting to mend it from the inside out. And suddenly this whole space is not as beautiful as it first appeared. And you've been living in a pretty low vibration And now I come in as myself and I smile and I say, it's time to get your bouncy ball on. <laughs> it's time to bounce on out of here. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Maybe I need to just like go with it way more. I'm like, oh man, there's something wrong with me. No, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> now we're going to get there. Okay, let's bouncy ball on out of here. And I do, I like start to turn into a bouncy ball and I show you how to bounce up and down. I say, just trust me on this. Just trust me. This place looks like dead world, okay? Dead upon dead upon dead upon dead upon dead world. Your heart is mending beautiful spirit in your heart. You're healing. And I start to giggle and I put the giggle in your heart too. Because the laughter is returning. And you start to become a bouncy ball and you practice this and you start to laugh and say, what? man, I take life too seriously. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and we just start bouncing higher and higher and higher. And we start to forget everything about life, everything about whatever that was. And we just focus on being bouncy balls. That's it. So nothing else but bouncy balls. And... The next thing you know, you're in a very high vibrational space and you're facing your higher self and your higher self has hair that's on fire. And it's, it's a man who has long hair, it's on fire. It's got a blonde appearance to it and he's got uh, like a long, boring white robe, okay? <laughs> really boring, basic. And this is all about what you could say the yin yang, the dark and light sides of who you are. I don't know if you're translatable entirely because you seem to be existing in like um, a place that has um, many cross sections. And it, I don't know how the energy flows through because it's so dense, but somehow it does. And I don't know if this is your dark side or your light side that you're facing because you come in as a shadow 
And this is like a man on fire in a way with all the white and the blonde and stuff. And so it kind of represents the light side, but it's confusing to me because I can't tell which is your light or dark or which is your yin or yang. And that says something too. But you need to start working with yourself. Whether it is a dark or light side, there, there's something that you're denying yourself, yourself. You're denying yourself a fire and the passion and the breath and the existence. You're denying yourself life itself. And you're a bit afraid to let go of the cross sections because they hold you steady and they hold you at the center of many sides. But once those shatter and break, you're going to be working with a compilation of many developments. You're like a seed that's, I'm not sure what kind of tree you're going to grow into, but it's going to be one of a kind, okay? <laughs> I don't know how you completely let go and I don't know how you completely embrace, but part of this is you're going to have to face your greatest fear, which that fear is love. The purest, 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 purest essence. And the purest of us essence, I know myself, the purest essence of love is like being burned alive. And a human being can't comprehend what I'm talking about because oftentimes love is comforting. Love is nurturing, healing. Love does not burn you alive. It's the love that is so vulnerable and the most authentic of itself. You have to let go of everything that you think you know and don't know. It all logic, all ego, every single thing. You basically shed the layers of all that is human. And all that is human holds you back from this kind of love. It's really, really unfathomable how powerful that kind of love is. And it's like a laser beam, okay? You don't really know how many dark sides, unresolved dark sides we have until you meet that laser beam and you feel like you're a shattered vase that's holding itself together barely. And you're just a normal, regular, everyday person until you meet that light. That light is true, pure, authentic, powerful, profound, Mother Mary level. Oh my gosh, I can't believe love could be like this. Okay, my guys give me a good example of what that, that kind of love is. <clears throat> you, you would have to know what I'm talking about. You ever, you ever fall into a situation where you feel horrible shame or horrible guilt and you can't ever forgive yourself, let's say. And it takes 20 years and you finally cave and let's say you, you confess to Jesus and you finally want to let it go. Like I just did a recently a journey on Patreon with Judas and the hardest thing Judas could do was actually face his best friend, Jesus, and ask for forgiveness. And Jesus had already forgiven him. And Jesus had been waiting for his friend to come back while Judas is ripping himself apart. So can you imagine the vulnerability in having been Judas to Jesus and now having the courage to go face your friend for what you did? The kind of love that can forgive you is piercing. It's like, but it's so raw and so real and so unfathomable and so beautiful. It's that kind of love. And letting that love in is what you're doing and what this session is all about. And it's about you loving you. It's about you letting love in that makes you vulnerable. So is it control? Is it wit wise? You're wise. But there's a controlling thing going on here because you're still holding these planes of existence together and they all need to shatter and break. You got to let it go and you have to be completely vulnerable in order to do it. So it's like, I can read just fine. Now I'm dyslexic. <laughs> Why is everything backward? No, it's actually the right direction now. It was backward before. You just didn't realize it. <laughs> so that's your session. Pretty darn interesting. Wow. Thank you for that. That really impacted my heart. And I feel like this session is all about the heart, all about the soul, but also about human nature and vulnerability, about peace, chaos, what activates us, 
what we avoid letting activate us that we need to let it in, the love, right? And really growing in a profound way. And I feel like the overall message too is a bit of a premonition of sorts. Like you don't have to try because it's going to happen anyway. That there's going to be some very bouncy ball, high vibrational energy coming in. And it's going to get you in motion. It's going to move you out of that space. It's going to help you come open your eyes and come back to life. And there is going to be some like clearing of some old broken parts and letting the love come in to kind of complete the circle so you can start being the horizon instead of like cut between a bunch of planes of existence but the horizon that you are that is all around you so it's it's an all-around pretty amazing message thank you for sharing the experience with us i wish you well um anyone um watching interested in exploring a session with me I'd be honored to take a look at any questions, anything you need help with. You can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a great day, everybody.